Hey guys, as a big fan of the web browser Q browser, and with the recent publicity that it's gotten from a fellow YouTuber that's much more popular than I am called DistroTube, um, I figured I would also talk a bit about it and talk about some of the configuration I have that is a bit unique and some of you might want to try out. So first off, let's talk about what Q browser actually is. Put it really simply, it is a keyboard based web browser that is based on the Qt framework. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's not super important. The big thing is that I wanted to mention that contrary to popular belief, Qt browser does not use WebKit. So if you guys have ever used Surf or a lot of the other open source web browsers besides Chromium and uh, Firefox, then you've probably realized that they're all kind of using a similar framework called WebKit. And so the big reason why I really like uh, Qt browser is the fact that it is open source, it is keyboard based, and it actually uses a different framework called Qt Web Engine, which is based on Chromium. Since it's based on Chromium, it comes with its own pros and cons. So let's go through them. So the biggest positive is the fact that it's more compatible than a lot of the other options. It's much faster than a lot of the other options, um, and it's more secure. See, the previous versions of Qt, uh, Qt Browser actually used Qt WebKit. Qt WebKit is based off of a previous version of WebKit, which actually has some vulnerabilities. So that's kind of a big trade-off, but luckily now it's no longer being used. One of the big things that I wanted to mention though is that the biggest negative that it has is that it's not really supporting the open web because since it's Chromium based, it kind of allows Google to get away with adding in extra features. And then obviously, there'll be more support for it because each of these Chromium based browsers have the same sort of features as Chromium, but something like Firefox, which uses a different web engine, um, will have a much bigger issue with these sort of things because it's not part of the actual standard. So there are a lot of other uh, keyboard based web browsers and I kind of wanted to talk a bit more about why I chose specifically Qt Browser. One of the biggest reasons is the actual uh, engine it uses as much as it may sound contradictory to say it's not supporting the open web, it does have the advantage of uh, Qt Web Engine being open source and not being completely controlled by Chromium, but it kind of is. So look at that however you want. So there are a lot of other options when it comes to trying to control your web browser with a keyboard. One of the most popular options is just using an extension for Chrome or Firefox. And the biggest trade-off with using one of these extensions is that there is slower input. So say for example, if I open a web browser and as it's loading a page, I wanna enter in something different and maybe I want to actually change what page I was going to or something like that, this is gonna be delayed because all these plugins are using JavaScript and it has to be able to load the JavaScript. You're not actually interacting with the browser itself. Now that's where the advantage of something like Qt Browser or many of the other like native keyboard-based browsers come in. Now these other uh, keyboard-based browsers that are specifically focused on using the keyboard have their own trade-offs. One of the biggest ones is similar to what I was mentioning before is that they're based on GTK WebKit. And while I think the project is great, it does have its limitations of the fact that I find it's less stable, can be a lot slower, and I find that it doesn't have quite the maintenance that you would hope to have as a web browser is concerned. And so that kind of just leaves you with the two options of Chromium and uh, Firefox's engine, so Gecko and Blink. Another reason that I prefer using it is the fact that it usually consumes less RAM than a lot of the other options. There are some like Surf, which initially will consume less RAM, but just because of the way that GTK WebKit works, it will eventually end up sucking up way more RAM than it really should be. And this pretty much happens for most of the other options. When it comes to Chrome and Firefox, I find that it also consumes less RAM than both of those. Another reason that I use Qt Browser is that the main dev Florin is actually um, really active and he's really good at communi communicating with the community. And since he's really active on GitHub, I find that I can always get a response if I ever have an issue. So one of the other reasons that I really like Qt Browser is I find its customizability is really powerful. Um, really the only thing that I've seen come close is Surf um, from the Suckless project and I've used Surf uh, in the past, I used it for about a year when I kind of got sick of the older versions of Qt Browser, but I kind of found that the trade-off with Surf was the fact that it was using GTK WebKit, which I mentioned before is like slow, but I find that I can usually get pretty much the same amount of customizability out of Qt Browser. Anyways, while we're on the topic of customization, the majority of this video is just going to be me showing off some of my configuration that I use. Um, so this will cover ad blocking, It'll cover how I automatically generate notes um, and how I customize the colors. Anyways, guys, let's go take a look at it. All right, so uh, really quickly, I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown on Qt Browser. 
So the first thing is that if you guys want to go to a URL or search, you just hit O and then you type in uh, what you want to go to. So if I hit ST, it will actually give me all my bookmarks. So let's go to uh, Suckless's ST webpage. There it is. Um, and it will allow us to scroll down using J, up using K, capital G to go to the bottom, GG to go to the top, and all that sort of stuff that you guys would expect if you are used to VIN key bindings. Uh, you can hit F and it will actually give you little hints on what you can click to um, go to a link. So if I hit G, it'll actually take us to EV, um, all that sort of stuff, so that's pretty simple. Um, anyways, that should give you guys a really quick, simple rundown on how you guys can do some stuff. So F gives you hints, JK, just like Vim, moves you up and down, and all the other stuff like Control D, Control B, Control F, all the stuff that you're used to with Vim is pretty much here. So now what most of you guys are here for is the configuration. So let's take a look at that. All right, so taking a really quick look at the configuration, um, I put a little link that you guys can go to to see more settings that you guys can set, but let's just um, show you guys the general stuff. So first things first, let's look at the YouTube ad blocking. So the way that the YouTube ad blocker works is I basically uh, create an interceptor, which comes from the uh, Cube Browser API. And so basically I just create an interceptor, I register it, and it is called filter y uh, underscore YT, which is basically um, this function right here. And it basically blocks YouTube from being able to show you ads when you're watching a YouTube video in Cube Browser, which can be pretty convenient. So really quickly, let's give you a quick demo. So if I just click on this page, you'll see that instead of actually watching an ad, it just gives me this little pop-up so I don't have to wait a few seconds. I can just skip the ad and go right into the video. So that's how you guys can block some ads on YouTube. All right, so let's go on to how I launch Cute Browser usually. So instead of launching it from a terminal, I actually like to use dmenu to basically act as a front end around uh, command line tools. You can do a lot of stuff with it. But in this case, I'm basically creating a really simple shell script that will check and see if I am using a window manager or anything, or if I'm just in a TTY. If I'm in a TTY, it'll open it in FCF and use W3M. Otherwise, it will use my native browser, which in this case is Cute Browser. It will basically uh, show me all my bookmarks. So if I hit Super W, which I have mapped to this, it will actually um, open this in D menu and give me access to all my bookmarks. And then basically, if I uh, select the duck, which is the first option, like right here, it will uh, open it in Cube Browser just at DuckDuckGo. If I select one of my bookmarks, then it will open it in Cube Browser at that URL. And then finally, if it is not any of these, then it will just search it on DuckDuckGo. That one's really simple, but now let's go on to the next one. Um, which is basically a special way to yank in different formats. Um, and so you can customize this how you guys feel. I personally use the org file format for my normal day-to-day -day notes, but a lot of people like to use Markdown, so you guys could just customize um, this URL format. But basically the way that this works is it yanks the URL and puts the URL in here and then surrounds it in um, angle brackets and then puts two angle brackets around the next one, and then it puts the title in between another two angle brackets, um, which is basically the format for a URL in org mode or in org files. So I do YO to do that. And so let's just go to here and I do YO. And then if I look, I'll actually see that on my clipboard, I have the URL and then the title right next to it. So pretty convenient. And then say if I wanted to just do etmp.org, I could uh, just paste that and it will give us the actual format that we were looking for. And then it will just conceal it. That's how I have it set up in Vim to basically hide the um, actual URL and just gives me the title, which is pretty convenient. Now this one's a bit more complex, but it will kind of make a bit more sense when you guys have a bit more context to work with. So the way that I do this is I actually um, yank. So I basically do the yank in line like I had before and it gets the URL. And then it actually spawns a terminal with my editor, which is either, uh, which would be Vim, but right now I'm trying out NeoVim because that seems to be the most popular thing. So I figured I'd give it a try. And then it will actually call a um, Vim script function that I wrote called create capture. Um, I cut it down just that way you guys only need to see the queue portion, but I have a bunch of other settings so that way I can call it from the shell and it opens it in different ways, or if I call it from within a file, it'll do all this other stuff, but this is just a really simplified version. It just basically goes to this file that I set right here, 
and then it reads from a template that I gave it, and then it uses a plugin called Minisnip to just expand all of that. Probably not necessary. You guys could probably replace this with an auto command, but the way that I do it works fine, but I'm sure you guys customize this. And if I get around to it, I'll change up the configuration here so you guys can use auto commands and not rely on an extra plugin. But anyways, this may sound a bit confusing, but this is just the general template that I use. So right here, I'm basically doing a star to do, which is how you make it to do entry in org. And then this will basically be evaluated and this just grabs register plus, which is your clipboard. And then it creates a scheduled section and it sets it to whatever today's date is. So let's just try that out. So I can do GN and boom, look at that. Now I've got a to-do entry with the title of the URL I was at scheduled for today. And I can add extra information um, like uh, this is a cool place. And then I've got that little note added in there nice and quick. And then I can save that, um, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to go back. But I'm sure you guys could see some use to this and you guys can kind of customize this. This is more just to give you guys the general idea. If you guys want something more generic, let me know and I can try and whip something up and put it out there for you guys to try out. Um, now I use an external tool that I use for my browser. So basically if it's a video, a YouTube video or anything like that, it uses YouTube DL and opens it in MPV, a video player. Or if it's an image, it will open it in my image reader. So just to give you guys a really simple example, I can do V and then KD on this diff and it will open the diff in Vim for me, which is really convenient. I use a, a little script that I wrote called Funnel, which is basically just a simple way to simulate something called Tasks Ruler. Let me know if you guys wanna know more about that. It basically allows you to launch things one at a time. So say for example, let's open uh, this diff. And so then I've opened that diff. And then if I go over here and I open another diff, LA, it won't open it until if I close that, then it will open the next diff. Um, so this is really useful for YouTube videos. If you don't want to open all your YouTube videos at once, you can queue them up. Um, now this one's really simple. It's basically a simple way to simulate read line key bindings in insert mode. And so read line key bindings are basically what you guys use in uh, Bash. If you guys don't have special key binding set up, it will just basically function similar to this. And so now I can actually use read line binding. So I can do control A, goes to the start, control E, um, let's type in some more words. And then I can do alt B, goes to the beginning. Alt F goes forward, Control W deletes it all, Control U deletes everything. Um, the sort of stuff that you guys will be used to if you're used to using read line bindings. These are kind of what I use. And then if I wanted to do something like a bit more complex, I could actually do Control X E, just like you guys use in read line, and it will open it in my editor. So I can do this, there we go, there's some text, and it will put it in the text box. Um, this doesn't always work, and so that's kind of why I have the read line binding set up, just in case I need something to fall back to because um, some websites are very JavaScript based and don't really allow you to use um, normal HTML text boxes. And then finally, uh, I use X resources to set my colors. Um, so really simply, this is just a really quick snippet that I grabbed from this URL uh, that Q browser has available for you guys to use. And then I actually just set my colors using my uh, X resources file. So I don't have to worry about any inconsistencies when I change a color, it will change it, especially also in Qt Browser, which is really convenient. Um, right here, I basically used X resources and like I made an if statement to basically check and see if it was a light theme. If it's not a light theme, then I actually set the web page to a dark theme. So I've changed my color scheme to a lighter theme. So if I open a terminal, you'll see that it's light and I can just type in some stuff and it will be a nice light theme. And so now if I actually open Q browser, I haven't changed anything. I need to kind of make D menu follow the same sort of thing. So let's open up in Q browser. And so now that I have that little setting that we'll check and see if it's a dark mode, we will see in just a second that it will actually use my X resources and make the background a light theme, pop-up menus, all light. If I go to YouTube, it will make YouTube a uh, light color scheme, all that sort of stuff, uh, really convenient. And I don't have to worry about customizing it myself every single time I change it around. Um, and sometimes having a light theme is convenient, which I often throw it on whenever I'm in really poorly lit, like bright environments, like I'm standing outside. Um, so I find this really convenient. And this isn't really something that's as easy to automate with something like uh, Chrome or anything like that. Finally, some user scripts I use is I use cast um, to Chromecast sometimes. I don't really use that too much. And same thing goes with uh, QPass, which is what I use to uh, enter my passwords. If you guys enjoyed this video, feel like you learned something and want to learn more about cool tools like this, then make sure to let me know by liking this video, subscribing, and checking out some of my more some of my other videos. I have videos on a bunch of different things, so make sure to check them out and hit that bell icon so you guys will know of my next video. Thanks, see you next time.